Your sinus health is important to us, and the way that we evaluate that is with a nasal endoscope. Endoscopy is rarely painful, but it is a little strange, and so we use a mixture of a nasal decongestant and a numbing spray to make it more comfortable for you. This is the spray, and we'll spray it in your nose like this. The nasal endoscope is a small tube. We use pediatric endoscopes for your comfort. It's less than three millimeters in diameter and rarely goes into your nose more than a few inches. You can see the, en the endoscope here in relation to a pen. During your exam, we'll give you TV glasses to watch the endoscopy. These are helpful for us because it allows you to see what we see and participate in both the diagnosis and whichever treatment we choose. The endoscopes are also helpful so that we can take directed culture samples from inside the nose. These are the same endoscopes that we use during surgery. So here's the inside of your nose. Nasal septum's on the right. Lower turbinate is here. On the left side, lower turbinate, the nasal septum. We can look further back to see the sinuses. The sinuses are hollow cavities in the head. There can be up to eight air containing cavities inside your skull. There are the frontal, ethmoid, maxillary, and sphenoid sinuses. One of each sinus is located on the right and one on the left of your face. The frontal sinuses are above your eyes, the maxillary sinuses are below your eyes, and the ethmoid sinuses are between your eyes. The sphenoid sinus is at the very back of your nose. The normal nose and sinuses are lined with a thin layer of tissue called the mucosal membrane. The outer layer of this sinus in the nasal mucosal membrane is covered with tiny hairs, which are called cilia. These hairs will move like the legs of a centipede in a coordinated fashion. These cilia beat in a single direction towards the drainage pathway of that particular sinus. A thin layer of mucus produced by the sinuses sits on top of the cilia and is swept by the motion of the cilia out towards the opening of the sinus. The mucus is normally thin and is needed for normal sinus and lung function, but disease arises when the cilia are damaged by infection or inflammation.